125 days. That's the amount of time that I have been using the Google Pixel 3a4, at least at the time of this recording. Now, I initially got this phone because I wanted an affordable smartphone with stock Android, a good camera, decent battery life, and a compact size. And it's great. I'm having a good time with this device so far. Its performance perfectly suits my needs, and as far as appearances go, it's one slick piece of hardware. If you've been to this channel before, you may have seen my earlier content on the Pixel 3a, and in those we went in-depth with the features of the phone, as well as its camera performance, and throughout the course of those videos, I've used this phone extensively. But of course, our smartphones age with time. And the question here is, how is the Pixel 3a held up after all this time? Now to answer this question, I will be sharing my experiences regarding the Pixel 3a. Of course, this is going to be different from what a lot of other people have gone through with this phone, but that's already a given. So here's my take on a hundred and more days with the Pixel 3a. Before we get started though, I just want to say that we are currently on the road to a thousand subs, so your support for this channel through likes and subscriptions will go a long way towards our goal. Alright, so let's revisit the build quality and display. Being a budget phone, the Pixel 3 is of course made out of plastic, and the good thing about its polycarbonate design is that it's got this matte look to it, which is pretty resistant to minor scuffs and scratches. Out of personal preference though, I have used a Speak and Tough armor case on it, which keeps it safe from most damage and gives me better handling of the phone. As for the 5.6 inch display on the front, I didn't use a screen protector of any kind, as I felt that the Dragon Trail glass will be enough to protect the screen. There are some minor scratches, which for the most part are barely visible, and I haven't gotten any burn in either, which of course is a known concern among OLED displays. However, I always remember to keep the screen brightness at a moderate level to avoid burn in. Due to being a budget phone, the brightness maxes out at around 400 nits, which is not very bright to be honest, especially when viewing it outdoors. This is more apparent when comparing its brightness to other AMOLED phones, which I've used before, such as the Galaxy S9 and the Galaxy A30s. Despite this, the screen still displays images with just the right amount of saturation and contrast, at least according to my preferences. This makes it ideal for watching movies and content, although more preferably if you are indoors. The loudspeaker setups in both the top and bottom of the phone have remained consistent in their performance, and I haven't heard any crackling noises when using the speaker to listen to media. I really enjoy listening to music on this phone, whether it be through the speakers or through the 3.5mm headphone jack located on top of the phone. The speakers are fairly loud and I haven't really needed to turn them up to the maximum volume when listening to media. For my transgression, I earned a new kind of reward. Alright, so the Pixel 3a so far has remained a reliable media consumption device. But what about software and performance? As far as software and security updates go, Google has done a great job of providing monthly updates for this device. After all, this is one of the biggest selling points of the Pixel phones and the Nexus phones before them. I initially got this phone with Android 10 pre-installed on it, and suffice to say I have gotten consistent monthly updates on my Pixel 3a. I enjoy using a lot of the software features on the 3a. For instance, the live caption feature is very handy when watching videos without any subtitles and it's pretty easy to activate. Likewise, features like Google Lens always come in handy when needing information about the world around you. Now going back to the updates, have any of them affected performance? I'd have to say that the 3a still performs as smoothly as when I first got it. One thing I did notice though is that sometimes the phone would lose its connection with my home Wi-Fi and I still have to see if this is a software bug or a problem with my Wi-Fi equipment. Hopefully, these issues will be addressed through future app and system updates. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 670 chipset and 4GB of RAM have held up pretty well. And yeah, I am satisfied with how the Pixel 3a performs overall. Multitasking, switching through different apps is a breeze, and I have yet to experience any drastic forms of lag or slowdown on the phone. Of course, the Snapdragon 670 is a long way from higher-end chipsets like the Snapdragon 865 and the Exynos 990, so heavier app use should be taken into consideration. As for gaming though, I've been able to run games smoothly on the Pixel 3a. Most games have minimal to zero lag, but I also keep my individual game settings in moderate performance to reduce heating and battery drain on the phone. The OLED display of course does a great job with color reproduction, so in-game visuals are all the more enjoyable. Now with all this talk about game and performance, you'll probably be wondering how this affects the battery. And battery life is one of the biggest highlights of the Pixel 3a. With average use, the 3000 mAh unit inside the Pixel 3a can last me 24 hours between charges, with around 6-7 to seven hours of screen on time. Of course, this is with moderate use, such as video streaming, music, web browsing, and messaging apps. Gaming will take a significant toll on the battery, so I do my best to keep my usage balanced. 
to stretch the battery life, I do keep the screen brightness to a moderate amount. Disable data since I'm pretty much always on Wi-Fi and I only use my location and NFC connections when needed. In general, the battery has been reliable and efficient. For an affordable mid-range smartphone, the Pixel 3a has an awesome trick up its sleeve. Now a couple of months ago, I did publish a travel video showing the Pixel 3a's camera performance and there's a link to that video in the description, so feel free to check it out. The 3A's camera is definitely one of the biggest highlights of this phone, and it certainly lives up to the hype. The 12 megapixel Sony IMX sensor on the back of the phone produces great shots when paired with Google's impressive imaging software. It is a great point and shoot camera that gives you good quality photos whenever you need them. I just want to say that I am in no way a professional photographer of any sort, and for casual mobile photography, the Pixel 3a is definitely remarkable. I really enjoy taking photos on this camera as I know that I'll end up with great shots for the most part. Portrait shots are very impressive and while they are great most of the time, I have noticed some instances when the camera fails to smooth out all the edges around a subject. Personally, it's not that big of a deal, but other users may want to take note of this. Images shot in night mode likewise turn out great, with just enough dynamic range to make out specific details in a shot. It beats out a lot of other camera phones in its respective price range as far as low light shots go, but you do need to have some patience with the 12 megapixel sensor. Video quality is just decent, of course you do get options for 60fps video recording at 1080p resolution, and you can bump this up to 4k, but sadly you do lose the 60fps frame rate at that setting. There's also options for slow motion and time lapse video, but I've only used those modes occasionally. Video quality on the front camera is not that great sadly, but for basic video chats and calls the Pixel 3a will of course get the job done. One downside I have to note is the lack of a microSD card slot. For a smartphone that can take great photos, it would have been nice to have more storage for said photos, especially if you shoot photo and video pretty often. So why am I telling you all of this information over the internet? Well as someone who has grown to like the Pixel 3a, I just wanted to share my thoughts on this phone and how it performs. As with any other phone, it does have its ups and downs with regards to the hardware. But getting a phone at this price will definitely come with compromises and consumers should take note of what things they're willing to settle for with a device such as this. On the other hand, the Pixel 4a is set to be released soon and the Pixel 3a will no doubt get price cuts which will make this phone a lot more affordable for people thinking whether or not they should get it. So that's definitely something to consider as well. Now if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more tech content. Once again, thanks for watching.